Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Scuba Diver Magazine. My name is James and I am Scuba Diver Magazine's man in Miami. Scuba Diver Magazine have brought me over from my own YouTube channel, Divers Ready, with one simple goal in mind, to help make you a better scuba diver. So if you haven't done so already, make your next dive on that subscribe button, click our little bell icon, and that way you will never miss any of our awesome content. This video is the next in our series that we're calling Dive Like a Pro, and this week we are focused on breathing. Later in this video, I'm gonna be giving you my single biggest instructor level tip to help you get your scuba diving breathing under control and make it the best it can be. But first, I wanna answer the three most common questions that I get as a dive instructor with regards to breathing as a diver. Starting with, why is breath control so important to scuba divers? Well, I'm a big fan of breathing in general. I mean, I'm, I'm like, I do it every day, all day. And I, you know, for as far back as I can really remember, I'm a massive fan of breathing. Whilst some people would put ability to fog a mirror on their resume, I've never really considered breathing a skill until you get underwater. Now, the reason that breathing is considered a skill when you're scuba diving is there's a right way to breathe and a wrong way to breathe when scuba diving. And you need to bear in mind that breathing, as we've been saying through all the core skills of scuba diving, is interconnected with the other core skills. So you have breathing, propulsion, trim, and buoyancy control. And if one of those is off, it's gonna affect the other three. How does breathing affect the other three? Well, first thing to remember is that your lungs, not your buoyancy compensating jacket or backplate and wing, are your primary buoyancy adjusting device. So if your breathing is off, your buoyancy is instantly off. If your finning is off, that's gonna affect your breathing, which is gonna affect your trim and your body position in the water. Everything is interconnected. And on top of that, the slower and more controlled your breathing is, the longer and more enjoyable your dives are gonna be. So question two that I get asked all the time is how should I be breathing when I'm diving? That's a fair question. I can understand why you'd be asking that. Uh, to answer it, I'm gonna draw on my experience as a technical diving instructor and give you some kind of next level advice and hints and tips for techniques that we use to minimize our gas consumption. If you're able to master it, I highly recommend that you develop diaphragmatical breathing. That means using your diaphragm muscles to draw air into your lungs rather than pumping it in with your chest muscles. So you're drawing air deep down into the bottom of your lungs and then emptying from the top using your chest muscles in a traditional way. What this does is it cycles the gas in your lungs as much as possible and gets as much CO2, which is the gas that actually drives your need to breathe, out of your lungs and pumps fresh gas in there. In technical diving, this is known as ideal breathing. Now, if diaphragmatical breathing just doesn't seem to work for you, there is something else you can do, and that's try to regulate the amount of time you spend breathing in with the amount of time you spend breathing out. So breathe in for a four count, one, two, three, four, and breathe out for a four count. When you can do that through your diving and you realize that your breathing has evened out, inhale and exhale, go to a five count. And when you can do that without having to count to five on each inhale and exhale and you just find that that's become your natural pattern, go to a six count and then you're pretty much instructor level. Having that nice rhythmic breathing is going to help slow down your heart rate, make you more relaxed, and it is going to cycle gas through your lungs as efficiently as possible. And then the third question I get asked all the time as a dive instructor is, James, my breathing is horrible, my gas consumption is embarrassing, what can I do to fix it? Well, lots of things, aside from the obvious of do more cardio and get into a better physical condition, there's a lot of things you can do to reduce your gas consumption, some of which are about breathing and some of which are about other gas uses while you're on a dive. One of the things I recommend any scuba diver to do that's looking to improve their gas consumption is refine their finning and trim. Now, we've already made videos on finning and trim techniques, and I'll link those one after the other up there somewhere. Uh, but needless to say, if you get your finning and trim as efficient as possible, you're gonna be expending less energy underwater. You're gonna be creating less drag, and each kick is gonna be more efficient. So what that's gonna do is mean that your body isn't working so hard, you're not gonna produce as much CO2, uh, and CO2 buildup is the gas that actually triggers your desire to breathe in, and that's what's causing you to consume more gas. So take it easy, chill out, bro, 
and also get your finning and trim on point. In addition to working on your finning and trim, I also want you to work on your weighting. And we've made a video about weighting too, I'll link that up above. But essentially, you always wanna be diving with the least amount of weight you can get away with. If you're overweight, it means every kick you're doing, you're propelling more mass through the water than you should have to which is gonna mean you're gonna to have to breathe harder. If you go for two jogs, the first jog, you just go for a jog as you are, and the second jog, you do the same exact run, but with heavy shopping, you're gonna breathe harder on the second run. It's the same thing we're talking about here. Another top tip that I tell my divers all the time, if you're just down there breathing like a pissed off dragon, is just plan easy dives. Just, you know, go for, stick with drift diving. Just low energy, super chill, super relaxed dives. And on that subject as well, manage your stress. Make sure you're not turning up late to the dive site or departure site. Make sure that you've got all your gear, double check everything. Remove anything that could cause you potential stress so that you're as relaxed as you can be under the water and your brain's not trying to play catch up. So yeah, make sure you're well hydrated. Make sure you get a good night's sleep the night before a dive. Remove as many as of the psychological and physical stresses as possible and make sure you show up to the dive as relaxed as possible. And then if you wonder why does your instructor kick your ass at gas consumption so badly when you're basically doing the same dive in the same conditions and you consider yourself to be fit, like how come they're significantly better than you? It's because we dive all the time. We dive all every damn day. And the more you do something, the more relaxed you are at doing it. So there you go, there's a top tip for you. Do more diving. I know that might not be practical if you've got a day job, but it's what it is, man. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. There are my answers to the three questions I get asked the most as a dive instructor when it concerns improving a diver's breathing. Now, as has become R1 on this channel and with this series of Dive Like a Pro videos, I'm now gonna give you my single biggest piece of advice that any diver can implement to improve their gas consumption. It is this. Learn how to and keep track of your SAC rate. SAC stands for surface air consumption, and it's basically a rate expressed in either cubic feet per minute or liters per minute for how much gas you used on the dive relative to your depth at the surface. It's a very simple piece of math, so I know it sounds scary, but it's actually very easy to work out. And if you keep track of that number, liters per minute, cubic feet per minute, whatever you prefer to work in, uh, you can look for improvements over time. Now, if you want more information on how to calculate your sack rate, I actually made a video about that on my channel, Divers Ready, and I'll link it up above there. Strongly recommend that to check it out because Breathing is one area in the core skills of scuba diving that is actually mathematically measurable. And if it's mathematically measurable, then over time, as you get more data points, you can look for a trend. Are you getting better? Are you getting worse? What changes can you make to make improvements? Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you did. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done already, because here at Scuba Dive Magazine, we are passionate about one thing and one thing only, and that's making you a better scuba diver. You know how it works by now, just over here, I'll put some other videos that I've created for Scuba Diver Magazine, and in the description of this video below is a link to my channel, Divers Ready, so feel free to head over there if you'd like to see more content from yours truly. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, my name's James, Scuba Diver Magazine's man in Miami. Dive safe, dive often, and, and, dive like a pro.